Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with square roots. Square roots or the square root? Okay, that's a good question because complex numbers, as you know, have two square roots, right? One is opposite the other. So this square root symbol is sometimes considered abuse of notation, but who cares, right? It doesn't matter. We just mean the square roots of a complex number. So we're going to approach this from different angles. I think I'll be presenting at least two methods. I don't know if I'm going to be doing the third one, but let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and do the obvious and square both sides. Obviously, squaring both sides could be problematic because we might be introducing extraneous solutions. But with complex numbers, it's a different story. Anyways, let's go ahead and square both sides. And we're going to get rid of the square root, which is going to give us i, z. Okay? That's equal to 5 plus i squared. 5 squared is 25. i squared is negative 1. And their product is 5i. Double that. You get the answer. So i, z is going to be 24 plus 10i. Now, this is going to be fairly easy because all we have to do is divide by i. Or if you really want to do this the hard way, you can go ahead and do the following. Replace z with a plus bi. Come on, that's the name of the channel, right? So you should respect that. So now you're going to get a plus bi multiplied by i, which is ai plus bi squared, which is negative b, plus ai equals 24 plus 10i. It's not super bad. It just takes a little longer. And then from here, negative b is 24, which means b is negative 24, and a is 10. And since our number was written as a plus b i, it's going to be 10 minus 24 i. So that's going to be the answer that we've been looking for, right? But how do you do it by division? Well, here's is what you can do. You get i z equals 24 plus 10 i. And then you're going to divide both sides by i. Or I have a better idea. Multiply by negative i. It's better, right? Why? Because... Negative i times i is negative i squared. And we just talked about this in another video, right, on my main channel. And that was negative i squared is negative, negative 1, which is positive 1. So i squared is negative 1. Negative i squared is positive 1. Makes sense? So this is just going to cancel out, leaving us with z. Let's simplify it by distributing. Negative 24i plus 10i squared. Negative 10i squared, that's going to be a positive 10 minus 24i. One more time, we got the same answer. Yay! Awesome. So that's the value of z using the first method. Okay, what about the second method? Obviously, second method this time is kind of weird because normally the first method is more painful, but we're going to use the... Anyways, this is what I call second method. I'm doing it second. Okay. Now, instead of squaring both sides... Oh, by the way, one thing we haven't checked is, does this equation, uh, does this solution actually satisfy the original problem? We kind of have to look at it. Anyways, but let's do the second method first, and then we could check it. Now, for the second method, I'm going to separate these two things. Square root of i times the square root of z equals 5 plus i. Now, why did I do this? Because I want to evaluate the square roots of i, and there's actually two of them. Okay, what are the square roots of i? How do you find square roots of i? Well, i can be written as e to the power i pi over 2. So the square root of i can be written as e to the power i pi over 4. But I can also add pi to it because there's two square roots and they're 180 degrees apart or pi radians apart. So that's going to give me 5i pi over 4. To write them in standard form, they're going to look like this, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. And of course, the other square root, which you can kind of call um, z sub 1, z sub 2, or w omega, whatever, doesn't matter. It's just going to be the opposite of this number. Because when you square the opposite of a number, you get the square of the number. Make sense? Okay, great. So what am I going to do with this though? Well, you can go ahead and divide both sides by that, but let's go ahead and use the first one first. I get two square roots, right? Multiplied by square root of z equals 5 plus i. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by that. 
And of course, you remember how division is done, right? If not, then go ahead and check out the lecture videos, but we're supposed to use the complex conjugates. Root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2. I don't get confused. This is not the opposite. This is not the other square root. It's just the complex conjugate. And then when you do the multiplication at the bottom, you're going to get uh, square root of 2 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which is going to give you 1. So this is going to be 1. Don't worry about it. So the square root of z is just going to be this product. And then let's go ahead and multiply. We get 5 root 2 over 2 minus 5 root 2 over 2i and then plus root 2 over 2i, and then finally plus i squared is negative 1, uh, root 2 over 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Square root of z is equal to 5 root 2 over 2 plus 1 root 2 over 2 is going to be 6 root 2 over 2, which is 3 root 2, and then this is going to be negative 5 plus 1, negative 4 root 2 over 2i, which is negative 2 root 2i. Make sense? Okay, so that's the square root of z. How do you find z from here? You are supposed to square both sides, right? Okay, if you square both sides, let's see what we get from here. Z is going to be 3 root 2 squared is 9 times 2, which is 18, minus 3 times 2 times 2 times root 2 times root 2. Oh my god, that's a lot of numbers. Like 2 times 3 root 2 times 2 root 2i, and then if you square 2 root 2, you get 8, but that's going to be 8i squared, which is negative 8. Wow, that's interesting. 18 minus 8 is 10, and this is root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. You get 10 minus 24i. Uh-oh, we got the exact same answer. And of course, you should get the same answer, right? It wouldn't be different. Now, if you go ahead and use the other square root, what happens? Because there are two square roots of i, and both of them should be valid, right? Hopefully. Now, here's what happens. If you take the opposite of this number, when you square both sides, it is going to give you i again. So when I squared this number, why didn't I get i? Because I didn't square it. So here's another approach that you can use without going into the conjugate thingy, because we know that this number squared is equal to i, so why not square both sides now, right? It makes much more sense, of course. If you square both sides, you're going to get a 1 from here because I mean i from there, z is going to be 25 minus 1, 24 plus 10i, and then this is going to be i, because remember, this is one of the square roots of i, so its square is i. Make sense? So square roots of i is defined as the numbers whose square equals i, but there's two of them. In the real world, that's the case too, but whenever we take the square root of a number, we don't say, hey, there are two numbers whose square equals 4 to a negative 2, but the square root of 4 is defined to be a single number, so we take the positive root as the principal square root. In the complex world, there is one principal root, and the others are just the other ones, <laughs> okay? And from here, you're going to get the exact same solution, which is 10 minus 24, which is kind of interesting. I, I mean, such a radical complex number squared gives us a nice answer. And of course, you could see that if you took out the square root of 2 from here, you're going to get rid of the radical. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.